Perfect. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming out to see my talk about slime molds. I really do appreciate having the opportunity to have people listen to me talk about slime molds because they are my favorite organism. And I thought this would be a really good venue for it considering how much they crop up in different roguelikes. My name is Cassie Sturman. I'm an earth and planetary scientist. And I titled this talk, Slime Molds, A Love Story, because I really love slime molds and I like to think that they feel the same way about me too. And I hope, I hope that by the end of this talk, you also learn to love slime molds. So there's a very long history of slime molds showing up in roguelikes, geek culture, and other kinds of video games. The first reference to slime molds in any video game that I know of was in Rogue. When you drink a potion of Sea Invisible, you would get the message saying that it tastes like slime mold juice. It's obviously also a cosmetable in NetHack. It shows up in Angband, various other roguelikes. Um, sometimes it's something you can eat, like in NetHack. Sometimes it's something you can fight. Sometimes you are the slime mold. And sometimes it's buried deep in an obscure character or monster description in the, in the documentation. So this raises the question of why are slime molds a thing in roguelikes? And I had the opportunity to talk to Glenn Wickman, and he told me the story of how slime molds became a thing in Rogue. He told me that on the drain pipe behind the dining hall, dining hall at UC Santa Cruz, there was a slime mold, a purple and white slime mold. I have no idea. They never identified it. But I imagine it looks something like that one right there. And Michael Toy and Glenn Wickman were studying at UC Santa Cruz when they started making Rogue. And it became a running joke within the science department there to include slime mold references and things. And this is how it's found itself um, in Rogue. It moved on to become a cosmestable in NetHack, the idea being that it was a customizable food that would appear in the game. They called it a slime mold to encourage players to change it in the options to something that wasn't a slime mold because they, the implication here is that slime molds are gross and undesirable. And I, one of the goals for my talk is to convince you that slime molds are not gross and not undesirable and that the default customizable food option for NetHack is just fine the way it is. <laughs> so can you eat slime molds? Yes, you can. They're edible. They are absolutely harmless to humans, pets, and plants. Some people consider them a pest in their garden. They like to grow on mulch. Um, but other people don't think they're pests. Historically, they've been eaten in Mexico as a food you fry in a pan, kind of like scrambled eggs. So um, I've never eaten one, but you could if you really wanted to. I went a really long time without knowing what a slime mold was. I just would encounter it in the hack all the time, but I think most people have never really questioned. I, part of the reason, I think, is because it's kind of complicated. They are protists. They are not plants. They are not fungus. They are not animals, though they sometimes exhibit characteristics similar to organisms in other kingdoms. Protists are unicellular organisms without any tissue, like algae. And within uh, slime molds, over the past several decades, they used to think all the slime molds were really similar to each other, but the more they look, the more, the more different they are. Some people argue there's up to six different kinds of slime molds, but there's two main ones. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the plasmodial slime molds, also called true slime molds, in this talk. And plasmodial slime molds are extra cool because they can form the largest unicellular organisms on Earth. It's one cell, but the largest ones have been recorded up to two meters in size. That's taller than I am. Uh, and it's, it's technically one cell, but it has up to thousands of nuclei within it. So slime molds, um, when they're happy and healthy and there's lots of food to go around, explore their environment at a rate of somewhere between one to 10 millimeters an hour. They look for food like bacteria and different kinds of fungi. But uh, if they find food is scarce, things get a little different. So this is a very simplified slime mold life cycle. If 
they find food is scarce, different slime molds in an area will begin to coalesce. This is where we get the amoebic forms that can grow to very large sizes with many different nuclei. Once they've grown and they are satisfied, I don't know exactly what triggers the next step, but they turn into fruiting bodies where they release spores of themselves, clones of themselves, and these spread to faraway regions. The slime mold then unfortunately dies, but its offspring will live on. My favorite thing about slime molds is that even though they are very simple creatures, they can exhibit some complex behavior, which I'm gonna show you some examples of um, right now. Some of you might have seen this study before. It was done in 2000, where they found that slime molds can solve mazes, much like a scientist would put a rat or a mouse in a maze and it would solve the maze. Scientists put slime mold in a maze and they put food sources at the beginning and the end of the maze. I don't know if this is cheating or not, but the slime mold then filled up the entire maze and shrunk down to find the shortest path between the two different food sources, essentially solving the maze. Here's a video of what that might look like. You can see the slime mold fills all of the space. They didn't give it that much time to shrink down, but you can see the answer is right there. Well done. Um, this idea that slime molds can find the shortest path between different food sources has been expanded to studies where they would place food in the same pattern as subway stations, or train stations, different cities, and they would try to get the slime mold to look like highway systems or rail systems. Here's a study in 2010 where scientists made the pattern of the Tokyo subway system and they argued that the slime mold paths between all the different food sources resembled the actual Tokyo rail system. Um, whether or not you're convinced, I don't know. Find, find me during a break and we can talk about it. Another super cool thing about slime molds, uh, you wouldn't expect something without a brain or a nervous system to have some kind of memory, but slime molds do have a sort of spatial memory. Anywhere that they've been, they leave a residue. And if a slime mold encounters that kind of residue, it will not go there again. It will not cross that path. This relates to the idea that slime molds exist. They shrink down to form efficient paths between food sources. So if a slime mold finds a spot where there is no slime mold, but a slime mold's been there, it knows there's not gonna be any food. The spatial memory has been used to force slime molds into this U-shaped trap. The, the U-trap is used in robotics. This is my understanding. I don't know anything about robotics, but it's used as a test of autonomous navigation. And they found that the slime mold could escape the U-trap using this spatial memory feature. Interestingly, slime molds also have been shown to exhibit a kind of temporal memory. Scientists took a slime mold and put it in what was essentially a slime mold torture chamber where for 10 minutes of every hour, it switched from being a warm, moist slime mold paradise to a very cold, dry, harsh environment for the slime molds. With the environmental switch came a change in states for the slime mold. It went from being very high energy, quick moving to a much slower, lower energy slime mold. And they found that even after they removed that stimulus, the slime mold kept alternating states every hour. Um, and I'm not really, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure that's well understood why the slime molds can do that. I could talk about different studies on slime molds all day, um, but unfortunately I don't have the time for that. I do encourage you to go and research these topics on your own. Slime molds have been used in biocomputers and even to make different logic gates. You see on the bottom right a chip uh, with a set of tubes and the idea being that you can put slime mold through these tubes and there's two inputs, two outputs. The slime mold can go into a tube and either not leave through any of the outputs, leave through one of the outputs or leave through both of the outputs. And you can make different kinds of logic with that. But like I said before, the slime molds only move one to 10 millimeters an hour. So it's not very efficient, <laughs> but you could do it. So um, I want to spend the rest of my talk talking about real-life slime molds. 
uh, in case you are motivated by your new knowledge of slime molds, to go out and find one yourself and take care of it as your own. You will need a large mason jar, like, like this one here. You'll need some kind of food source, oatmeal will do, a damp paper towel, a fruit cup container, or some other small can-like object, and of course you're going to need a slime mold. So this is me, um, I think in August or September, in Joaquin Miller Park, trying to go on a slime mold hunt. It took me a couple hours because it had been really dry around that time, but I did eventually find a slime mold to, to make my pet um, for the purposes of this talk. Like I said earlier, they really like mulchy areas, areas that are moist, um, so underneath logs, or if it's been raining lately, and places where they don't have to see a lot of light. Those are your best candidates to find a slime mold. This one here we found on a log that was rotting, and where the slime mold was the biggest, there was some sap coming out of the tree, so it had that sweet, sugary food source to sustain itself. Unfortunately, in between finding that original slime mold and this talk, it died. Um, it turns out slime molds need air. <laughs> so make sure, you, make sure you poke holes in the top of your jar. <laughs> yeah, Bob suffocated. But these are pictures um, of my second attempt. I call him Slimy the Second. And these pictures are actually from 6 a.m. this morning. I'd like to thank Josh and Johnny sitting over there on the floor for coming out with me to Wakeen Miller Park to hunt a new slime mold. Um, so you can hang out with this slime mold during break later, uh, 3 o'clock in the kitchen area, I guess. Uh, they are edible. Um, I would prefer you didn't try to eat my slime mold, but we are going to have slime mold cupcakes for you. They are vegan, just like slime molds are, um, but I think they might violate gluten-free conduct. In summary, slime molds are harmless, intelligent, and beautiful creatures, and I hope that you have a newfound appreciation for them. Thank you. Questions? Do they have like any kind of inherent flavor properties? You'd have to try for yourself. <laughs> Would it be fair to say that you're aspiring to start a protest movement? <laughs> With, within the roguelike community, at least. Besides eating them, is there anything else, uh, any benefits to foraging them? Like, can you use them for dyes or medicines or anything like that? They make great pets. <laughs> hey, uh, can you crossbreed them for like prismatic coloring or enhanced strength? I mean, the coloring is real, the strength maybe not so much, but like, do they look cool when you mix them and... That's a really good idea, and I encourage you to try. <laughs> do, do they need much exercise? They're kind of moving all the time. I really think they're moving as fast as they can. Oh, man. Uh, um, are you going to lead us on a slime mold hunt? If anyone uh, wants to go slime mold hunting with me, now's a really great time because of all the rain. Um, I'm serious. So if I'm going to customize my slime mold to be a specific kind of slime mold, mm -hmm. like, do you, is there a kind that you recommend that would be especially wonderful? Yes, my favorite slime mold um, is called the dog vomit slime mold. <laughs> it's fluorescent yellow and commonly found in gardens. This may be a kind of dog vomit slime mold if you want it. Check it out later. All right. Thank you so much.